In this video, we're going to take a look at box plots. So for this video, we're just going to take a look at what we covered in GCSE maths. We're not going to cover anything new here, but box plots. So the first question is, why do we use box plots? And the reason we use box plots is because it's a nice, quick, easy way to show the key bits of a data set. Okay. So what I've got here on the screen is just an example of a box plot. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to label the key parts of this box plot. So what I've got here at the beginning, this first line here is my lowest value. That's my lowest value. Or we might say that's the smallest value. This next line here, this is the lower quartile, which we can call Q1. So like we said, that's Q1. This line here now, the next line, this is what we call the medium. Sometimes you might call that Q2. So that's the median here. which is Q2. This line here now, this is the upper quartile or Q3. So that's the upper quartile or Q3. And then finally, we've got this line here, which represents our highest value or the largest value. Okay. So like I said, that's just the largest value there. Okay, so that's everything we need there to get us started for our box plots, and that gives us our recap. Let's take a look now at a couple of practice questions. Taking a look at question one, now we've been told that a teacher records the mock exam scores for her maths class, and she presents the summary data in this table below. Okay, now we're told that there's no outliers present within the data set, so we're asked to draw a box plot for the mock exam scores. So all I need to do here is work from the left to right. So if I start with my lowest value, that score there is recorded as 11. So using our um, scale here, I can see that this is going up in two. So it goes um, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So this would be 12. So if my lowest value here is 11, we're going to be halfway between 10 and uh, 12 here. So let's just say that our highest value is here. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, if you're doing this um, by hand in an actual exam, do use a ruler. But I am doing it freehand, so it might be a little bit. Um, untidy. Okay, so that's my lowest value. We now have the lower quartile, so we'll take off the lowest value. We've now got the lower quartile here, which is 28. So I've got 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 here. Okay, so this would be my lower quartile. So let's just jot that down there. Okay, so that's the lower quartile. We've now got the median at 42 here. So this is 40, this would be 42. Again, just jot this down here. That's the median done. We've then got the upper quartile at 55. So this is 50, that's 52, 54, 56. We're going to be halfway between, let's say, the. Okay. So that's my low quartile, median, upper quartile. So we can join this part up now. Okay. Again, do use a ruler for this. I am doing it freehand. So it's not quite as neat as it should be, but we get the idea. And obviously, I can join this up now to the lowest value. And then finally, we've got the highest value here, which is 68. So 60, 62, 64, 66, and then 68 here gives me my highest value. Okay. Again, if I just join that up here, we get our box plot there. Okay. And there we have it. It's as easy as that. That gives our solution to question one. And finally, taking a look at one more question here to finish with. So we've got the box plot below, which shows the marks from a school exam. Okay. So it says from the box plot, identify the lowest value, the highest value, the lower quartile, the median, upper quartile, and any outliers. So I didn't mention this at the beginning of this video, but I should have done really. So for outliers here on a box plot, that would be presented as a little cross like this. So straight away, I can see that I have an outlier here. And that would be, again, we're going up in two here, so 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So my outlier here is a mark of 12. Okay, so outliers. We only have one here. There's no outliers above my highest value. So in that case, my outlier here would be 12. Okay, this point here. So that's the outliers done. We then got the lowest value here. So for the lowest value. 
In this case, this would be this line here. So this would be 12, 14, 16, 18. So it's going to be halfway between 16 and 18, giving me 17 there for the lowest value. So that's the lowest value done. We then got the highest value. We'll just jot this down here. So what about the highest value here? Well, that would be this very last um, line here at the top. So that's going to be 60, 62, 64, 66, 68 there. What about the lower quartile now? So the lower quartile is this rectangle part here, but it's going to be the first line on this rectangle. Okay, so it's going to be this line here, so 32, 34, 36 there for the lower quartile, which I'm going to just call Q1 here just to save a bit of time. So that was 32, 34, 36 there. We've then got the medium. Now, my diagram is not perfect here. I should have um, took the red shading off here, but my median is this dark red line in the middle. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just do that in a different color, just so it's a bit easier to see. So that there, that is my median. Okay, which in this case is 40. So the median, or Q2, whichever you prefer to call it, that's 40. Okay, so I'll keep that in green there just to show that that represents the medium. Going back to my original pen color then, all we need now to finish with here is the upper quartile. Okay, so Q3. So again, just taking a look at the box plot here, I can see that Q3 must be this line here, which is 50. Okay, so we get 50 there for the upper quartile. And there we have it, that gives us our solution to the final question, and that brings us the end of this video on box plots. In the next video, we're going to take a look at cumulative frequency.